Hey everyone, me again. Today I've got an affordable makeup haul for you. So there's a few things from the drugstore, there's a couple of bits from Beauty Bay, and there's some things from Fragrance Direct as well. So there's quite a few foundations in this video because I am always on the quest for the perfect foundation. I have very pale skin, as you can see, with a neutral undertone, and you'd be surprised how difficult it can be to find a foundation that matches me. My skin is also quite dry, so I'm always looking for something that's quite flattering around the drier patches, but that still lasts reasonably well. And finding something that matches all that criteria has proven to be quite difficult. Of course, me being me, I can't remember the prices of any of the products I'm going to talk about, so I'm just going to have them on the screen in the corner. And of course, everything will be linked in the description box below, so you can have a look at the website yourself too. But the first thing I picked up was from Fragrance Direct. This is the Bourjois Healthy Mix Serum Foundation. I do often criticise Bourjois because their shade range for their foundations is so abysmal. So I thought that because this product is a serum foundation, because it's super super light coverage, I might be able to get away with it even though it is a little bit dark and a little bit yellow. Upon swatching it, I have a feeling that I might be wrong. I have a feeling that it still might be too dark to make it work even though it's very very sheer. However, I do still want to give it a try at some point. Because it's a sheer coverage, I was thinking that this would be more something that I'd wear on a day where I'm not really doing a full face of makeup. Sometimes I do just like to wear a little bit of foundation and nothing else, just when my skin is looking a bit more red than usual. So that's really what I bought this for because I thought it might be quite sheer but still reasonably long lasting, hopefully. Formula wise though, I have heard a lot of good things about this, so I'm still looking forward to trying it out. There's another base product here which you might remember from my recent autumn makeup tutorial. This is the Technic Get Gorgeous Liquid Highlighter in the shade bronze. So this is just a highlighter for deeper skin tones, but I have been using this as a liquid bronzer. It's got a really cool toned bronze reflect to it. If you're interested to know how I've been wearing this, then I would definitely go back and watch my previous autumn makeup tutorial because you'll see it for yourself. But basically I just blend this in around the outer perimeters of my face, the same places I would put a powder bronzer, and then I apply liquid foundation on top and it kind of all blurs together and just makes a really beautiful base. It just kind of warms up the complexion a bit and adds a bit of glow. It's really, really lovely. It looks quite extreme when you first swatch it, but after you blend it out, maybe you can see that the color kind of fades a bit into something a lot more subtle a lot more wearable, especially if you put it underneath foundation. It's just the right amount of colour. If you want it to be more intense though, you could put it on top of foundation, mix it with your foundation, whatever the hell you want. But I've actually really been enjoying wearing this and it wasn't very expensive. I do want to try a few more things from Technic. I think at this current time I've only tried their highlighters, but I've really liked all of them. And I do have the lighter version of this as well. So yeah, I do really want to try more from the brand. If you have any favorites from Technic, please let me know what they are in the comment section below so that I can pick them up. I have like a million concealers open at the moment, so I really shouldn't be picking up any more. But I liked the look of this one from W7. This is their light diffusing concealer. I think when I saw it on the website, this was the only shade, which kind of surprised me. But of course, once I swatched it, it did make a bit more sense because you'll see for yourself, it's quite sheer. So it's literally just designed to add a bit of radiance, I think. I don't think it's designed to give you very much color. There's a little bit of like a pinky tint here, but once I blend it out, you can see it just kind of disappears into nothing. So I think this is just designed to add a bit of radiance to the under eye area, which to be honest, I desperately need. I have dry skin anyway, but I do find that now that I'm going to be 30 next year, that the under eyes are looking particularly dry and I do just need more radiant and more creamy concealers. And I'm trying not to focus so much on having heavier coverage because that just seems to make everything look 10 times worse somehow. So yeah, if you really like your Instagram makeup, I would not recommend this at all, but if you're looking for something very natural that's almost invisible, maybe you'd get on with this. Now, I didn't obviously get all of these eyeshadows from Fragrance Direct. There were just a couple that I picked up from there. So they're from the brand Prima, and I got the champagne shade over there. I got the rose gold color over here, and the blue shade over here. I'll do close-ups of them, of course. But yeah, I've been working on my custom eyeshadow palette for a while. I'm sure if you're a regular around here, you remember a few of the shades I picked up from Colourpop, a few from Revolution. There were just a couple more that I wanted and Fragrance Direct 
had them. The champagne shade is really, really nice for the inner corner. The rose gold is lovely all over the lid. And the blue one, I don't really wear a lot of blue eyeshadow, funnily enough, but it just looked so nice that I thought I might as well grab it. And it really reminded me of the blue in the Kami MUA Make Magic palette. And if you saw my first impressions featuring that palette, you remember how much I really loved that blue shade. I mean, you can probably tell from the rest of the palette. I'm more of a neutrals person, but sometimes it's nice to experiment. Anyway, the quality of the shadows is really, really nice. They feel very pigmented, very smooth, very easy to apply. I think they were about four pounds each. So that's probably the same price as most individual eyeshadows these days. I know individual shadows are more expensive than getting a palette. It's not the best option in terms of value for money, but it's just something I'm really curious about. I grabbed another product from Technic. This is their Magic Mist, and it's in a really, really pretty pink shimmery color. It's one of those setting sprays that you shake before you apply, and then it just leaves your whole face looking a lot more glowy. I haven't tested it out yet because I wanted to talk about it in the haul before I tried it. It doesn't look like it leaves like a, a really obvious glitter on the skin, which is good. I've seen a few people try these in YouTube videos and they just end up with a, like a really glittery disco ball face. This doesn't seem to do that, it just seems to leave a very nice glow to the skin. But I probably wouldn't use this as generously as I normally use a setting spray. If you've seen my makeup tutorials, you'll know that I normally tend to shower myself in the stuff. I don't think I'd do that with something like this, but I'm still very curious to see what it looks like. And maybe it could help me out if I'm having a day where my skin's just looking a little bit drier than normal, where it just needs a bit of life bringing back to it. I think this would be really cool. I also got one of my favourite mascaras. This is the Maybelline Lash Sensational Mascara in brown. I'm actually really enjoying the £1.20 mascara I got from Poudier on AliExpress, but they don't do that in a brown colour, so I thought this would still be handy to have in my collection because sometimes I like to change things up a bit. I haven't opened this yet. I have no intention of opening it until I actually want to use it, just so that the product up doesn't dry out. But yeah, I really, really love this mascara. I've been repurchasing the black one for years. It's nice if you want your lashes to be defined but still quite volumized with a good bit of curl. I also saw that they had a few CoverGirl products on Fragrance Direct, which I thought was pretty cool because we can't get that brand here in the UK. They had quite a lot of their foundations, but I had a feeling that zero of them were going to match me. So I picked up their lip balm instead. This is the Vitamin Infused Balm in the shade 7 Soda. And it's just your bog standard kind of moisturizing lipstick sort of situation. It looks quite dark in the tube, but once you swatch it, you'll see that it is very, very sheer. It gives more of a look like like you've been drinking Ribena and just leaves a little bit of a flush on your lips. It's very pretty and it does smell nice as well. It smells quite fruity. It's kind of somewhere between a sheer lipstick and a tinted lip balm. I do like the colour. I think it's quite versatile. It's a really nice one just to throw in the handbag and chuck on your lips when you're on the go. Oh, and the last thing I got from Fragrance Direct was actually a free gift. I don't know if this offer is still on because I did place my order a little while ago, but because I bought those um, Prima eyeshadows, I actually got these little beauty blenders for free. Well, they're not the official beauty blenders, they're like the Prima versions, you know, you know what I mean. But it's just those tiny, tiny little sponges that you can use to blend out your makeup underneath your eyes. I went through a phase of really, really liking these and then I just kind of kept forgetting to dampen them when I was going to wet my regular sized beauty sponge. And if I'm honest, nowadays I don't always bother with these just because you can just use your regular sized beauty sponge, it does exactly the same thing. But they are quite handy to have, especially if you you know, want to get right in the little nooks and the little corners under your eyes, which I often do. So maybe I will start using them again. We'll see. Next, I placed my first ever haul with Beauty Bay, but I only got two things, so don't get too excited. There were just two products from LA Girl that I was very, very curious about. So we've got another foundation. First of all, this is the Pro Coverage HD Longwear Illuminating Foundation. And I don't normally buy foundations just online without being able to swatch it in store first and get a general idea of how it feels. However, LA Girl you can't get in UK drugstores, you can only get them online. And I wanted to mention that because if I had seen this in store, there is no way I would have bought it because it is completely the wrong shade. It kind of takes the piss because the shade is actually called Fair and it is their palest one, but You'll see, you'll see in the close-ups, it's not, there's nothing fair about that, is there? Like, look at it, that is, that, that's pretty orange. 
Honestly, it reminds me of when I was in high school and trying to buy makeup because they did not have pale shades at the drugstore when I was in high school. Like, look at that. that that's, that's completely ridiculous. But do you know what's really, really annoying about this foundation? Do you know what really, really winds me up about it? Is that I actually tried it when I bought it. So I mixed it with like a whole bunch of foundation mixes to get it to a shade that relatively matched me. I applied it and it was the most beautiful foundation I've ever worn in my life. My skin looked amazing and I'm just so annoyed that such a beautiful and perfect foundation that I love so much has to have one of the worst shades that I've ever tried. So if you're one of my paler subscribers, then I would definitely not recommend this unless you have a crap ton of foundation mixes already and you don't mind mixing foundations to make them work for you. Personally, I don't get as excited about having to do that just because there are some foundations that actually match me now on the high street and if I have the option of not mixing something, then I'm not gonna. But saying that, I did actually pick up two foundation mixes in this haul video, so maybe I do still like mixing foundations sometimes. But the other foundation mixer I got was from LA Girl on Beauty Bay as well. This is a bright blue foundation mixing pigment. And yes, it does come out as blue as it looks in the bottle. And you're probably wondering why someone would create a blue foundation and why on earth I would think to buy it. That's because if you're as pale as me and you're trying to buy a foundation, you'll know the struggle, but a lot of the lighter shades are very yellow. They're always that little bit too warm. And I have a crap ton of foundations in my collection that are a really lovely finish but just a little bit too warm for me and this kind of cancels that out i have actually tried this it does work it looks really scary but it does actually work it can neutralize any foundation that is too warm that's too yellow when you're first mixing it it will look really green and you'll think that you've made a terrible mistake but keep mixing it keep going and it does eventually neutralize the foundation completely. It's kind of magic. But yeah, it's a great product to have around if you have a bit of a hard time at finding base products that actually match you properly. And I'm sure you can figure this out for yourself, but I will just say it anyway, don't use too much of it. You only need a little tiny, 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 tiny bit of this. I'm talking like, the, like that much. If you go in with too much, it will make the foundation look a bit green, look a bit weird. So yeah, be very sparing with it, but it does actually work. It is worth it if you have lots of yellow foundations that you want to be able to wear. I also picked up a few things from Superdrug because they were having a big three for two recently across all their makeup brands. And whenever they have that offer, I always like to take advantage and pick up a few things that I've had my eye on. So I'll show you this first because it's another foundation mixer. It's kind of along the same wavelength as the bright blue one that I just showed you, but this one is a violet color. So it does have that little bit of blue in there, but it's also a little bit lighter as well. So this is really handy for foundations that are too yellow, but also a little bit too dark. This will kind of help it to neutralize, but also to lighten the foundation a bit too. I've got a feeling that I must have ordered these foundation mixers right after I filmed my declutter video, because sometimes when I go through all the foundations in my drawer, I kind of think, how many of these can I actually wear? How many do I have to mix with another product to get them to work? So maybe in my head, I felt like if I got more foundation mixers, then I'd get more wear out of the foundations that I currently have. The color looks pretty spot on. It's very difficult to find foundation mixers in the drugstore, but gosh, I've actually got a few in this color drops range. And then I got two actual foundations. So the first one is the L'Oreal True Match in the shade 0.5N Porcelain. I have wanted to try the L'Oreal True Match for a really long time. I think I did try it in university actually, but it was way too dark for me back then. Then they reformulated it and they had this big campaign about how it matched like almost everyone. Of course it didn't match me. It was still too dark for me. But then I saw that they'd released this new shade. I don't actually know when they released a shade 0.5. I don't know if it's been out for like months and I've just not noticed. So when I did see this recently, I really wanted to try it. I'm actually wearing the foundation right now I'm filming a first impressions, so keep an eye on my channel if you want to know what I think of this. But yeah, it's really nice to actually be able to wear this foundation. But I also have a foundation here from Revolution, and I do just want to mention with Revolution that 
They've had foundations pale enough for me right from the get-go, which is pretty amazing. So this is their brand new Conceal and Hydrate foundation, and I bought this more because I knew that you guys would want to see it reviewed, if I'm honest. Like, I bought the True Match foundation for me because I was curious about it, whereas this one is definitely more because I think you guys will be curious about it. So I've tried all the other Revolution foundations. I'm always the shade F1. I do have individual videos for some of them, and a video where I compare all of them together. So this is the only one that's missing from my collection. And I wanted to pick this up because I did try to conceal and define foundation, and obviously because I've got dry skin, it wasn't my favorite. I did love the coverage, but I didn't like the satin finish. I didn't like the applicator. I really hated the applicator, if I'm being honest with you. But this one claims to be a little bit more radiant, and it's got a pump. It's the first revolution foundation with a pump. They finally did it. But I definitely want to do a first impressions on this foundation as well. So far I've just swatched it on the back of my hand and it's really interesting. It's a very liquidy foundation. It's not a runny texture but it's a lot more liquidy than I thought it was going to be. It's a very thin feeling, it's very lightweight, but there's some serious coverage to this. Also interestingly when I swatch it on the back of my hand it looks like it does oxidize a little bit more than the other Revolution foundations that I've tried. It's not so bad that I won't be able to wear it, but it is worth noting. Just in case you're stuck between two shades, I'd probably go for the lighter one. But yeah, I'm really curious to try this out, so I'll definitely do a video with it at some point. So that's everything that I've picked up from Fragrance Direct, Beauty Bay, and Superdrug. I did say there were a lot of foundations. Give this video a thumbs up if you enjoyed it. If you like watching haul videos, make sure you subscribe because I post far too many of them. I post new videos every Sunday at 9 a.m and sometimes on Wednesdays as well if I can get my act together. I'll see you guys at the next one. Bye!